my thoughts uh, for to, to, tonight and for upcoming is um, anytime that we have an opportunity to go online or wherever, just to meet someone even in the, on the street, is that uh, as we as we go forward, um, my thoughts are how do we convince a world that is uh, that is dying that they need Jesus? Hmm. And um, I was I was hearing some statistics about um, suicide and other things such as how these different drugs are taking hold and. I was looking at a program on a, a, a it's called Ask the Pastors on TCT. It's a one of them stations, and they had some of the craziest questions that they were asking. Uh, people don't believe. I mean, people do not believe that there's a guy. They don't believe there's a hell. And the guy finally mm. said, "The Bible says uh, that, uh, that, that that person's a fool. They don't believe that there's a guy." And so. So I think we just need to take these lessons um, serious because I, I, this is it's incumbent upon us to to go into the world. The thing that the God we talk about the Great Commission, but the commission that God has given us that we be prepared to um, uh, to to tell others about the the, the Christ. So I, I hope that if, as we hear these these teachings, that we will apply them to our lives. So that we can be prepared to witness and save someone, uh, uh, draw somebody out of, out of that out of hell's uh, craziness. Okay, so Amen. we just we need that. We need to do that. We Amen. To do that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> totally agree with you, Pastor. Amen. We just thank God for, <clears throat> and y'all. I'm trying to drink some water and stuff. My throat is kind of acting kind of crazy so um but um we just need to um like pastor says you know share these share the lessons and stuff they're, they're not just for us they're for the world absolutely and so we need to we need to share um what god has given us um um and not just be as I, I used this term before spiritually constipated <laughs> yeah. you know we keep all the words to ourselves, not just what you hear here, but what we hear on Sunday mornings, um, we need to share the word of God. That that is our commission um, that we're supposed to be doing, um, and so that that's what excuse me, that's what we need to do. And so, God, we thank you, we thank you for another Wednesday night. We thank you, God, for another time that we can come together and share your word with each other. We thank you for another opportunity, God, that we may. Hear more of you, God. God, we need you more now than ever before. And so, yeah. God, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for our pastor and, and our first lady. We thank you for all that will be on, on tonight. Those that couldn't make it on, God, we thank you for them. And we pray that they have studied the word wherever they are. God, we just bless you on tonight. We worship you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And Amen. 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 Our lesson tonight is promise of obedience, promise of obedience. <clears throat> and I want to read the introduction. Um, most, I hope, I'm hoping that everybody has a book um, at this point. Um, um, Amos reminded me that I didn't give him one. He wasn't there when, we, when I was giving out the books and I was supposed to have given him one. And I still haven't, um, but I gave him the scriptures and stuff. So um, if Amos is on, please forgive me. Um, well, our lesson is promise of obedience, and it's taken out of Exodus 19, 1 through 6, um, and chapter 24, 3 through 8. And our golden text reads, Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And this comes out of Exodus 24 and 3. And our aim for tonight is um, our fact is to examine God's covenant with the people of Israel and their response to his words. And the principle is to show that as people of God, we are called to obey the words of our God. Let me repeat that. 
to show that as people of God, we are called to obey the words of our God. And our application reads, to demonstrate that when God speaks to us, he expects us as his children to obey him. And when I was, when I was, when I was um, reading this and studying this lesson, the scripture that came to my mind was John 10 and 27. And it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Um, and so only the Lord's true sheep follow and obey him because they know him and they recognize his voice. And when I was thinking about this, and I don't know, I don't know if everybody remembers this, but this lesson, a lesson that Crystal uh, Richardson taught a while, a long time ago um, when we were doing Sunday school and she was teaching a lesson and she showed us a video and that thing impacted me and it, I think about it all the time. But in, and I don't know if you were in there, Pastor, but um, in this video, um, it had the sheep in the pasture and these people were trying to call the sheep and they were trying to imitate the shepherd. And they were just using their, and all these different people and they were trying to imitate the shepherd's voice and the sheep was out in the pasture acting like they didn't even hear him, you know, didn't look up, didn't do anything. And so after about three or four different people had gotten up and tried to imitate the shepherd, the shepherd got up and the shepherd started calling the sheep. And the sheep, not only, they stopped what they were doing, Pastor, they just stopped what they were doing. They looked up and the people were like, oh my goodness, they, you know, they're looking up. And not only that, as the shepherd called the sheep, the sheep started coming to the gate. That they, <laughs> just the idea, just the fact that all the imitators, all the ones who tried to imitate that's the shepherd, the sheep knew that that was not their leader and they knew that that was not their shepherd. And so they didn't even look up. They just kept eating their grass like they didn't even hear them. But the minute the shepherd, but the minute the shepherd heard, they heard this, the shepherd started calling and, and they heard the shepherd's voice, the sheep started coming to them. And so this is what this lesson is talking about. When it says to, to demonstrate that when God speaks to us, when God speaks to us, just like the shepherds out of that field, when God speaks to us, the application said he expects us as his children to obey him. When, when we call out, I don't care how old they are. When I call Shannon, I expect her, I don't care how old she is, I expect her to hear me and respond to me. My mom, when, as old as I am, when she calls me, she expects me to respond to what she said. She expects me to answer her. And so this is what Jesus is saying. This is what the, the aim is for today. And again, I can't see everyone. So if you have something to say, please just speak out. Our introduction in our book says, in our first lesson, we saw God's preparation for delivering his people from bondage by calling and commissioning Moses to lead them. Moses' obedience was hesitant, but God got him over his reluctance. In the second lesson, we saw him prepare his people through the instructions regarding the Passover lamb. This led directly to their rapid escape from Egypt culminating in their dramatic deliverance from Pharaoh's army through the miraculous parting of the Red Sea. Now a new chapter in the history of Israel has, was about to begin. As the Israelites camped in the wilderness before Mount Sinai, God called their leader Moses up upon, unto the mountain to receive a promise and a covenant. It was Israel's responsibility to obey the covenant of law. The Israelites agreed to this, to this requirement and the appropriate burnt offerings and peace offerings were presented at the altar. Sacrificial blood was sprinkled by Moses. Again, if you have any comments, anything, please, um, you can talk. So our lesson um, is broken into three parts. The first part is called camp and it's Exodus 19, one through two. The second part is called contact 
and it's Exodus 19, 3 through 6. And the third part is called conformity, Exodus 24, 3 through 8. And that's how we're going to be teaching it tonight. And so Exodus 19, 1 through 2 reads, and this is the ESV version. It says, on the third month, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim, or Rephidim, and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. And so the Israelites had departed Egypt and arrived three months um, later to Mount Sinai. Um, Mount Sinai is the mountain where um, um, Moses saw the burning bush. It was in the first lesson, it was called the mountain of God. Um, and so this is where they are now. Uh, it says on that day in Numbers 33, 3 through 4 says on the day after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with boldness in the sight of the Egyptians. For the Egyptians were bearing all their firstborn whom the Lord had killed among them. Also on their gods, the Lord had executed judgment. So we talked about in this lesson how God, that was the 10th plague and all after this, after this plague, Pharaoh was like, I need y'all gone. <laughs> like, I, I want y'all out. I need y'all gone. Yeah, this is too much for me. All of y'all need to go now. And so what had, so many things happened. Many things happened before they arrived on the mountain. The first thing was God delivered them from Egypt and gave guidance on which way to go, offering them a future and a hope. Exodus 13 and 18 says, so God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. And I thought that was so interesting that he didn't just say go, but he led them in orderly ranks. He led them in orderly ranks. And, and, and King James Version said, the King James Version said, but God led the people out through the, through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And the word harness means to be to tie together or yoke. The, the, the ESV says, God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea, and the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. They were equipped for battle. So when God led them out, he didn't say, y'all just go on out. <laughs> but God had a, did it in an orderly fashion. Orderly ranks mean that they were organized and in fighting formation. God was organized. He was organized. They weren't left to be disorganized. And then what else happened? And the scripture said they saw God's glorious victory at the Red Sea. Um, and this comes out of Exodus 14, 13 through 14, and 24 through 25. It says, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. He said, you ain't gonna ever see them again. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold um, your peace. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pull of the fire and cloud. And he troubled the army of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels. God was not playing. God took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. And so both the, not only the Israelites, but the Israelites and the Egyptians saw God's deliverance of the Israelites. So we're just talking about what has happened since they left. And then um, they received God's miraculous gifts of food and water. Exodus 15, 
24 through 25 talks about the people complained against Moses and what shall we drink? And because the water was bitter. And the Bible says that um, the Lord told Moses, showed him a tree. And when he cast the tree into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And then in Exodus 16, the children of Israel complained again, what we're going to eat. They were talking about um, uh, what they were in um, Exodus 16. Yeah. Two through four it talks about what we're going to eat. They were talking about when they were in Egypt. Uh, we sat by the pots of meat and we we ate and bread to the full. They weren't they weren't happy about God's deliverance. They started thinking about food. And then it says um, that that what happened? That God rained bread from heaven. And then they still weren't satisfied. Exodus 17, they complained again about we don't have nothing to drink. Um, and it said the children of Israel complained, um, complained again. And what happened? It says that um, Mo God told Moses to strike the rock, and you should strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, and the people would drink. So God is not that God didn't even God didn't just show them as deliverer that He was a deliverer, but that He was also a provider. The people complained, God provided. Ain't that like us today? Well, not y'all, not 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 everybody. Pastor, that's just me. You know, we complain and God provided. God did the same thing with them. They saw victory won over the, uh, um, um, the Amalekites. The Amalekites and the Amalekites were um, godless warriors that who had attacked um, the Israelites. They didn't just attack them, but they brutally attacked them. And the scripture said that they won victory over them. Um, and so all of this stuff has happened. So now they are, are in Israel. They are camped before the mountain, the mountain of God. And this was the beginning of the fulfillment of what God said um, in Exodus 3 and 12. When he said, so he said, I will certainly, who's talking here? God is talking. He said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt, and you shall serve God on this mountain. And so this mountain that God is talking about, Israel, God has now brought them, has now led them through Moses, with Moses' help, God has led them to this mountain to worship him. The people of Israel serve as an illustration of what God will do to rescue his people. Um, the people of Israel had gone through a lot. They had gone through a lot. But God, but God, they had a lot of but God moments. But God had delivered them through it and from it all. And so when, when I think about this, we many of us have had, most of us have had that but God moment where we've been in trouble and things have happened and what, you know, been sick and all this stuff, but God, but God delivered us, but God healed us, but God gave us peace, but God. And so they had some, but God moments. Pastor, I see you off of mute. You have something? I, I came off because I was thinking about all the things that had been done, but also I was thinking that he had identified himself and, 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 um, uh, when he told Moses to go back and he, Moses said, well, who should I tell them that who sent me? He said, tell that I am that I am. That's right. And, and, and when I get out of this lesson, is for me. I go back and review my past, review my, uh, my yesterday, this morning, and see am I that uh, blatantly blind to who God said he is in my life? Because I, 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 I failed at that. Because I want to, I want things to go well in, in the way I see it, and not trusting that God has already have the plans already laid out. That's right. So I'm, I'm making it all this personal for myself because I am, I really, I kind of missed the boat there a little bit. So I can't get, I can't get down on the children of Israel because the children of Tim Gibson are still act just sometimes that way. That's it. Absolutely, and and I thought about the same thing, Pastor. Because God had a plan. Yeah. And, and we read the scripture all the time. You know, I know the thoughts I have for you. 
you know, yeah. and we like, ooh, get excited. But God actually know has a plan for our life. Yes, he, does. <laughs> he had a plan for them. He had Moses to go back to get them. He That's told right. them, Moses said, well, who am I to tell them? Who do I say sent me? And he said, tell them that I am sent you. I yeah. am. I yeah. am their deliverer. I am the God that's going to feed them. I am the God that's going to give them water. No matter how much they complain, I am the one that's going to do all of that. I am the very present God. And so we have to remember that through it all, he is the very, he's a very present God. And he already has a plan. Yeah. He already has a plan. It's just up to us to follow God's plan. And that's where I, not y'all, that's where I mess up because I'd be like, but God, let me help you out a little bit. Y'all don't want to help God out, but I, I have tried to help God out about 20 times, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. and so God is like, you know, I've already, I already got this whole thing laid out. He told Moses to go get them and bring them back. So he had to have a plan. <laughs> yeah. He had to have a plan. And so God was God was rescuing. God was delivering. And, and all of this stuff, God had already had a plan. God already had all of these but God moments already lined up for them. Anybody else? So then Exodus 19, 3 through 6. Reads, while Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the <laughs> You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, and a holy nation. He said, you yourselves have seen what I did. God reminds Israel of his great power and care for them through the Passover God clearly indicated that Israel was never to forget their rescue from Egypt. And I started thinking about the song that we always sing, Jesus, I'll never forget. But yeah. sometimes we act like we forgot. Yeah. Sometimes when things happen, be like, whoa, God, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he was like, do you not remember what I did before? Yeah. Do you not remember? You know, we can sing, you know, and do you not remember how I healed Sandra Gibson? Do you not remember how I healed Rachel? Do you not remember how I healed you? Do you not remember? Did you not remember what I did? And so God is reminding them like, hey, wait a minute. Do you not remember? Have you forgotten that quick? You ain't been in the wilderness that long. Wow. <laughs> Do you not remember? Have you, he says, have you not seen what I did? How I, I gave you bread and water? How I killed all the uh, uh, um, all those all the, the warriors who were against you? Do you not remember how I did that? Did you not? Were you blind? Wow. Have you not seen? He said, I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And it speaks of the loving compassion, protection, strength, and watchfulness of God. God carried them to safety in the desert. He has provided for them. And we have all um, probably heard at least one or two times about eagles. And people have done messages on eagles. And one of the things that, that I've always thought was amazing was that when, when the mother eagle has her babies and um, she's teaching them to be so to go solo and be by herself. She yeah. kicks them out of the, the nest. And we mothers, you know, we like this kind of stuff. <laughs> we, yeah. She kicks them out of the nest. And before they can fall, she goes underneath them yeah. and she catches them on her back. 
That's right. And so that baby puts her, her claws into her mom because she knows that there is safety there. There right. is protection there. And so if a hunter is coming by and, and sees that eagle, before he can kill that baby, he's going to kill the eagle first because yeah. the eagle is so protective of this baby. And God says, I bore you on my wings. I That's right. carried you when these people were trying to kill you. I did that. That's right. That's right. And he said, not only I did that, he said, and I didn't just deliver you. He said, I brought you to me. That's right. I took you to the wilderness and I brought you to me. Come on, Sister Barnes. I, I was also thinking about, I love how um, God in verse three, he said, um, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. So God also is reminding them, he's trying to get that slave mentality oh. out of their minds and he's reminding them of yeah. who they really are. And like you and pastor were saying earlier, you know, we have to apply this because sometimes some days, you know, it's right. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You have to remember who you are. You have to remember who God has called you to be. And that is what you walk in. Get rid of the, the old mentality. Get rid of the, I can't, I'm not good enough. Or, you know, yeah. all those excuses that we make Absolutely. for why we can't do or why we're not being who God has called us to do. And remember who we are. I am a child of the King and we have to keep those things in mind. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. And we have to remind ourselves of that. Amen. You know, I can't, I can't remind you because sometimes I got to remind me <laughs> because we all have those moments of woe is me, but sometimes I have, it's like, have you not, didn't you see? And sometimes I have to say to myself, Sharon, do you remember? Do you remember? Because not all the time you're going to be around me and not all the time pastor going to be around me and not all the time I'll be able to get to Shannon or Raphael. I have to sit down and remind myself, God, I, you know, I remember God. I remember when. Go ahead, pastor. You have something. I'm shaking. That I, I was just thinking and that as you were saying that, that's why the word of God is so important because the word that came to me was this. I've hid the word in my heart. Mm, you must have been reading my slides. Did I read it? Okay, I'll let you go. I'll leave it alone. No, go on. When that's, we get to that point, point, I'll just keep on going. <laughs> yeah, just go. That's just, just the way it should be. I can tell you my failure, but it's the word of God that comes back up and says, wait a minute. Can, don't you remember that you've hid something inside you? He said, I've hid the word in my heart. That's what the yes. psalmist says, that yes. I might not sin. That sin means to rebel. That's right. I can go wrong. I can go off. I can go wrong, but I can't. I shouldn't rebel and say God ain't gonna help. That's, that's right. Lie. That's yeah. right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh 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 uh. That's good. That's good. Y'all helping me out. <laughs> it says God didn't rescue or deliver Israel so that they can live apart from Him, but so they could be His people. Their deliverance was for relationship with God. God didn't save us. He didn't rescue us. He didn't rescue me. We got to make this thing personal so that I can be apart from him. But he wanted a relationship, not just a relationship, but a personal yes, relationship Yes, with me. He wants a personal relationship oh, with us. Right so there. when we remember what God has done, it brings me closer to God. God said, I want you to remember. I want, I want, I want you to have a relationship with me. Before you can have a relationship with anybody else, you need to have a relationship with me because nobody, you know, now, now I, I listen here, listen here. Now I think my daddy was the best daddy in the world. Like, like for real, the best in the world. Y'all may have other thoughts, but hey, he mine was the best. But guess what? Nobody has done for me a, 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 a been a rescuer, a deliverer like God. That's right. It's just nobody. And he said, I did this because I want a relationship with oh, you. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I wow. want a relationship with you. God went through a lot just to have a relationship with us. 
He, wow. he sacrificed his son so that he can have a so we can have a relationship with him. And so that's what this was all about. God was like, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. He says, if you indeed, the word if is conditional. That's why I got it in red here. He says, if you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. Yeah. God had blessed and protected them. God had redeemed them so that they might live a redeemed life. He expected loyalty and obedience from them, his chosen people. It's a, it was a relationship of obedience. Yeah. <laughs> a relationship of obedience. Now, if you read the story, uh, the covenant at this point had not even been given yet. It had not even been given. But God said, "You don't, don't worry about what the covenant is going to be. Your job is whatever I say, I need you to obey. Whatever, I, whatever this covenant is going to be, I need you to keep. If you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. See, we know the story because we've read the Bible lots of times, but they were living it. <laughs> Yeah. So they don't know yet what this story is going to be. They don't know what the covenant is going to be. They don't know what the laws are going to be. They don't know anything. But God says, I need you to agree to obey my voice because you belong to me and to keep my covenant. And so what was this covenant that God was about to give them? And Exodus 34, 27 through 28 tells us, Exactly. We don't have to guess. It says, the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So God wanted and he expected them to obey. God wants and expects us to obey his word it don't matter god says it don't matter what i say because everything he says is right and so if he tells us to do something he was like we shouldn't be you 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 know y'all know you're not maybe y'all kids didn't do this but she had to be like what you want me to do what you know like so mom why <laughs> why, why why you want me to do that you know i tell jordan because i said so you know and that's one of the things I said I would never do because you know how my mama said that, but then we end up doing it too <laughs> because I said so. <laughs> just because I said so. And so God said, just because I'm God, why are you doing it? Just because I am God. And look, look at Exodus 31 and 18. It says, and he gave, and he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. So this, this covenant was going to be so important. And we hadn't even gotten to this yet, but I just thought I would mention it. This covenant was going to be so important to God. God said, I am going to write it with my, the, my own things, with my own power. I'm going to write this. Written with the finger of God, meaning that it's going to be written not only said by God, but written by the with the power of God. Man, listen, yeah. this thing, yeah. listen, bless me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This bless me. Written with the power of God. Yeah. Written with the power of God. He says, I bore you on angels, but I brought you to myself. I brought you to myself. I brought you. To me, yeah. I think all the time, Jordan and I talk all the time, you know, and Jordan says to me, I got you, Nana. And I said, you don't got me. I know that ain't correct, English. <laughs> I said, but you don't got me. But what God is saying to them is, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. All you have to do is obey my voice and keep my covenant. I got you. I got you. And mm -hmm. unlike Jordan, who really don't got me. <laughs> God is like, I got you. All you have to do is obey me. I got you. Any other comments or anything? 
Sister Sharon, I was just thinking as I hear you and I, I know what the word is saying and I'm like, okay, God, so why do I struggle here? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Why? Mm. I, I know you. Question. I know that you're a God of your word. You said you watch over your word to perform it. You yeah. said that you perfect those things concerning me. Yeah. Why do I struggle with trusting you? Why do I struggle with stepping out on faith? Why do, why, why? And this why? is just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ain't that it's something? And Sister Ball, this, this is what I got from my, I, so I, answers, I, get, I try to get answers quick. She, when you go back to that part you said about relationship. Well, when you establish relationship, see, we don't never stop. Uh, most of y'all know the men that's given to be married a long time. Do you know that all that time we're still establishing relationship? And, and that means you have to continuously be with a person to establish relationships so you get to a place where you trust them without. And that's the reason why we're going to continue to do this. Because he's established a relationship. You said that Moses went to that mountain. I know I'm taking over. Moses no, no, went no. To that Go ahead, mountain. Pastor. Yeah, he did. He went to that mountain and he did not eat. He was a human being, went to a mountain where God was and his appetite was no longer with him. What happened there? He had established relationship with God mm. that he began to, he began to look like God. Everything, I think he was transformed into being like a son, like he should be. And then he, he had to worry about no food because his body did not ache for food. All his, all his body wanted was to be in relationship with God. I'm finished. I'll stop right now. because I'll, I'll go off, Pastor. I'll go off in tongues over here. Y'all been leaving me alone. <laughs> I, think about, I think about the movie, uh, 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 The Ten Commandments. And when Moses goes up, when he comes back, he is like shining bright. He yeah. has been with God, been in the presence of God so long that he started shining like God. Yeah. He didn't think about food. He didn't think about water. All he wanted was a relationship with God. And so mm -hmm. we have to get to the point that all I want, God, is a relationship with you. And so what does that, what does that, Take. Me, it takes me obeying him. It takes me believing him. It takes me saying, I know how I feel. I know what it looks like, but God is going to deliver me. But Thank God you, is going to heal. But God is going to set free. You, but God. And so we have to keep in mind that God, God said these promises and God is a keeper of his word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need that. I need that. He's a keeper of his word. He can't lie. And we have to remember that God cannot lie. He said it. And yeah. we have to remind, that's why we have to talk to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I talk, I'm constantly talking to myself. God, you said this. You said it. You said it. And so if we keep God, what God said in our mind and we rehearse it to ourselves, we won't be in that position of, well, I don't know. No, my mind will say, God said it, I believe it, and that's it. And We're going to try to get you the like message, but Pastor, go on. And the next, I told you, y'all talk, that the next time I feel that same way, I have to repeat the same thing. God that's said right. it. I, and that's the, I, I don't have to change the words. It's just I have to keep repeating that. God said it. God, you promised this. And I just need to get to a place where I just trust you. Well, God, I didn't I didn't, I did 24 hours. That was it. God, <laughs> I didn't make it past 24 hours. Well, here I'm again. And I have to keep saying it. I have to keep reminding myself. I'm, I'm, I'm finished with two more minutes. <laughs> Jump in this any time you want. Take, this I recall to mind. My, my, Therefore, my I have hope. It's because of the Lord's mercy my, my, that I've not my, my, been my. consumed. Lord, have yeah. mercy. Woo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to recall it to our mind. Oh, try not, not, not. I told you to leave me alone. Mm. I go on mute. Woo! 
Jesus, Ooh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you Jesus. for helping me, Lord. Let me. Yeah, God, we have to recall it to our mind. He said, I did it. Don't you remember what I did? Recall it to your mind what he did. Thank you, God. Recall it to your mind what he has already done. Not what he's going to do, but what he's already done. Recall it to your mind. And that's what he was telling them to do. Recall it to your mind. He said, you shall be my treasured possession among all people. The, the living Bible says, now, if you obey me and keep your part of my contract with you, you shall be my own little flock from among all the nations of the earth. He said, oh, he said, you're going to belong to me. If you do what I say, then you are going <laughs> to. So there are many nations, there are many nations on the earth, yet God chose who? God chose them. They were to have a unique place in God's great plan. A people of great value and concern to God own suggests the idea of a special treasure. It isn't just anything you own, but something that you own that is especially important to you because what you may consider a treasure sister Barnes, i may be like well i hate no treasure but it's a treasure to you the word i looked up the word treasure and it said something of great value or worth to you something of great value or worth to you to hold or keep as precious so if i you know, I, I, I can have something simple and you'd be looking like, well, you know, what, what's what, what's important about, about that? Shannon has a lane, you know, those Hawaiian lays. And, and she had gone to a family reunion right before her dad died. She went to their family reunion. And when she got there, her dad was there and he gave her this lay. He had a Hawaiian theme. Her dad died in... 2002 she still has this lay because it's a treasure to her now you look at it you'd be like uh, what you know if you go near it, she'd be like uh, like no i don't touch that and probably something that costs a couple of dollars they probably the whole family all the biden family wore one because it but because her dad gave it to her it's a treasure <laughs> to her not to anybody else but a treasure to her. She got it in a special little box. She got all this stuff because it's a treasure to her. She holds this thing as valuable to her. And so God says, you will be my treasure. You will be, because you are of worth to me. You are of value to me. It says, here's what Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says. It says, for you... For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people of what? For his treasured possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. He said, you are special to me. And then Titus 2, 13 through 14 says, um, the Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us, from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession um, who are zealous for good works. So God has chosen us and he says, we are his treasure. We are worth great value to him. We are God's great treasure. God calls us to be holy, set apart to who? Him and for his purpose because we are important. We are a treasure. We are valuable to him. It don't matter what the rest of the world think about us, Sister Barnes. It's what God thinks about us. God says, you are, you are a treasure to me. And how, why, how can God do this? Job 41.11 says, 
Whatever is under the whole heaven is mine. So God said, everything belongs to me, but I chose you to be my treasure. Everything belongs to God, but God chose them. Everything belongs to God, but God chose us. <clears throat> Look at what the scripture says. For your heart, this is the Passion Translation, for your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. So God pursues his treasure. The, the choir sings the song, I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. But long before the choir, long before we pursued God and started chasing God, God was like, I was chasing you. <laughs> because you were my treasure. So I was chasing after my treasure. I was chasing after you, Trisha. I was chasing after you, Ellen McDaniels. I was chasing after you because you were worth it to me. You were valuable to me. When we were in our sins. Go on, Pastor. No, I'm saying, I don't know. You don't want me to go ahead. Go on. No, you go ahead. That's okay. Well, I was thinking about something. That's all. No, I, I want you to go ahead. A, a, a billionaire, a person yes. who has a, a, a lot of money, they have a value on their on their own wealth. That value that God has, He put that value on us, so He brings our value up to His value. <laughs> Got to get that. A billionaire, a, a billionaire can own a, a team. He can go buy paintings. He can buy little crazy items, and he can put a he puts a price. They have these little things. They put prices on stuff that we wouldn't even dare buy. Some of these paintings that they have, they would put up because of their value. Mm -hmm. and he brings that, so he makes that piece of a, uh, uh, that painting his value. Well, God does the same thing for us because he's he he knows his value. He brings us up. To his value. His value. <laughs> That's why he pursues us. He always want to bring us back to him because we are, he said, I want you to be holy, for I am holy. Yes. Let me stop. Let me stop. He wants us to be like him. Deacon like Cope, you him. had something. Deacon Cope, you had something? No. Hello. Yeah, you have something? Yes, I was uh, saying that's why God said I will never leave you and forsake you. And um, uh, that was it there. That's good. Amen. Amen. He won't. Why? Because we're his treasure. Yes. Absolutely. He's not going to leave a treasure behind. Listen, I, <laughs> I told y'all about this lay shed in hand. Guess what? They were moving from one house to another. Shannon didn't, she didn't trust nobody with the state. I was like, I got this. She was like, I got it, mom. I got it. Again, yeah. they probably cost $2. May have cost less than that, but they probably got the whole bag. <laughs> they probably bought the whole bag of it for $10. You know what I mean? But it's a treasure to her. Thank and so because Jesus. it's a treasure to her, she was not going to leave this thing behind. She was not going to put it in storage. She was not going to do anything with it. She take care of it. She is valuable to her. She ain't letting you touch it. She ain't my, letting my, RJ my. play with it. She loves her son, but she, <laughs> she ain't letting her son play with it because it's a treasure to her. Mm, 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 mm. It's a treasure. We are a treasure to God. Then he said, you shall be to me a kingdom, yeah. <laughs> a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So I looked at like, what are some of the responsibilities of the priests in the Old Testament? And, and this is just some, I'm not, this is not everything, but this is just some. And one thing was they were intercessors or mediators. Um, they were in liaison between God and his people. They had unique access to God and the responsibilities to represent God 
to the people. So God intended for a kingdom Ooh, where you. every believer could come before God themselves. They declared blessings on people. And the, and the mm -hmm. praise team sings the song. It says, speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Amen. Lord lift up his countenance Amen. unto thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. God said, I want everybody in the kingdom to be able to declare blessing. And everybody. then they worship God. They, they burn incense day and night. And God mm. said, I want a, a kingdom of people that's going to worship me day and night. And then mm. they were responsible for teaching and instructing in the way of God. They had to re represent the Lord effectively. That's they received and pass that's along good. the word of God so that the rest of the nations would be able to have it. So everyone would know. And everyone will be able to teach the word of God because they were a kingdom of priests. They were a kingdom of priests. They all would be intercessors. They all would declare blessings. They all would worship God. They all would teach and instruct in the way of God. And it said that God intended Israel to be what? A holy nation, a nation and people set apart from the rest of the world, his own possession, fit for his purpose. First Peter 2 and 9, you got to go to that. It says, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. And so God said, you all are this. You, you all are this. You don't have to wait for pastor to do it. You don't have to wait for Sister Bond to be an intercessor. We all are intercessors. We mm -hmm. all declare blessings. We all can worship. We all can teach uh, and instruct in the way of God. And this is what God is doing. This last scripture, the church, the church is the new Israel. We are. We are. Uh, we are God's treasured possession. We And then listen, listen. Um, 1 Peter 2 and 10 says, who were called, who were once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So God said, not only are you my royal priesthood, he said, but you now have mercy. You are yeah. now my people. You belong to me, yeah. my very own. God said, you are my very own. And our priority should be worshiping God. Our priority should be being yeah. before God. Our priority, like Pastor said at the beginning of, of, of the, of, well, before we even started talking, I started teaching, we all should be not only taking this word in and not just keeping it to ourselves, but teaching it to others. Amen. That is our job. And when we do this, we're showing God how much he's worth to us. How much he's worth to us. That ends chapter 19, 3 through 6. And then other things is going on. So I'm going to give you a glimpse of what happened between chapter 19 and chapter 23. Because the next part is chapter 24. And 19 and 7 says, so Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded them. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has, has spoken, we will do. It was a constant response to them. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, behold, I'm coming to you in a thick cloud um, that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe you forever. Verse 17 says, Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Um, now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in the fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln. 
and the mountain and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him in thunder. Chapter 20, the verse first says, and God spake all these words saying, now God begins to give him the 10 commandments or the covenant. He says, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Uh, uh, most um, translation says bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. And then Exodus 20 through 23, the 10 commandments is given and on the other laws were given to Moses to govern the Israelites. Then to our lesson now, Exodus 24, one through eight, conformity. It says, then he said to, to Moses, this is God talking, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, um, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near and the people shall not come up with him. <clears throat> Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars, according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse five, and he sent among, and he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin to the half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people and they said all that the lord has spoken we will do and we will be obedient and then verse 8 and moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant that the lord has made with you in accordance with all these words so it says moses alone came near to the lord Moses alone. Moses was allowed special access to God. So God had invited the 70 elders up to worship him from afar, um, allowing only Moses to come near. And the rest of the nation was um, were to remain further away. And this is parallel to the tabernacle, um, where the priests had a greater access to God than the people and the high priest alone could enter the Holy of Holies once a year. And all the people answered with one voice, all of the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So when the people heard the law of God, they responded with a promise of obedience. And this is where our title for our lesson came from. They responded, God, we're going to do whatever you say. We're going to do whatever you say. They had a verbal they verbally committed to God. And then the scripture said, and Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. God's word was so important that it had to be, it could not be left up to human recollection and memory. Um, it, 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 it had to be written down because these words were going to instruct future generations. And so the words of God was very important. Um, Israel verbally agreed to a covenant relationship with God, but this wasn't good in them. God was like, I want you to, I want you to write this down. I want you all to see, I want you all to be able to see what I'm saying to you guys. Look at Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that read it. It's important to write it down. It's important to go back and look at it. That's why we have the Bible. So we can go back and look at it. Nobody can say, well, I don't think that's what God said. No, you can read it. It's clear. It's plain what God was saying. Writing the words will make it clear and have a permanent impact on the listeners. Clearly defined Israel's relationship with God. It, it talked about the consequences of of both obedience and 
disobedience. They didn't have to wonder what God was saying or what he meant because it was all written down. We must have a living, breathing relationship with the word of God. The scripture says, keep my commandments um, and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Pastor was talking about writing it on your heart. He says, write them on the tablet of your heart. God's word, as Pastor said, must be written on our heart. It must be in our heart so we won't forget it, so we can remember it. It must be. Because not all the time that the Gibson talked one time about when she was in the hospital and, and she didn't have the Bible there that she could read, but the word was written on her heart so she could rehearse it in, 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 in her room because she knew what it said because it was written on the tables of her heart. When we're at work, you know, when y'all at work, I don't work no more, but when, when y'all are at work, not every place you go, you can have that Bible open. But if that word is on the tables of your heart, guess what? You can rehearse it over and over again because it's in your heart. Hebrews 8 and 10, the Passion Translation says, I will embed my laws within their thoughts and fasten them unto um. their hearts. That's good. He says, I will be their loyal God and they will be my loyal people. Why? Because the word embed means to fix firmly and deeply. God That's says, right. I'm going to, he says, I'm going to fix my word firmly. I'm going to put it deep into their heart. And then he says, I'm going to fasten them into mm -hmm. their hearts. He said, I'm going to secure it into their heart. That's and he right. said, and you going to be my, I'm going to be their loyal God and they're going to be my loyal people because it's fastened in their hearts it's fastened in their hearts and then it says he built an altar at the foot of the mountain give me a few more minutes he built an altar at the foot of the mountain the covenant was only made through sacrifice sacrifice admits our own sin um, and failing before god and addresses that need through the death of a substitute and we talked about a substitute last week um, the covenant, the covenant sealed with a sacrifice on the altar. We almost done. It said he took the covenant, the book of the covenant, and read. He took the book of the covenant and read. It was a restatement etching again upon their minds and hearts the remarkable thing that had taken place. The scripture says, so faith comes from hearing mm -hmm. and hearing through the word of Christ. This is Romans 10 and 17. So our faith grows as we hear God's word. Their faith was going to grow as Moses read this book of the covenant. It wasn't just something that, that Moses made up, but it was something that came directly from God. So Moses read this, mm. this book aloud so that they could hear it and so that they could read Almost like when you hear something, it's almost like you're like repeating it over and over to yourself. Yeah. I can go to our home church in South Carolina, and there are certain things. I was brought up AME and the Apostle Creed and all this stuff. So the bond, they start saying it, and guess what? I heard it so many times growing up. Guess what? I can just repeat it. Amen. Shannon would say, how do you know that? Because we heard it over and over and over, and so we knew it. Because we heard it over and over and over again, and it became a part of us. He says, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So they, again, there was a response to God's word that they will do everything that God said. And it says that Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people. And so this was a twofold aspect of the covenant. But blood splashed on the altar demonstrated God's gracious forgiveness in accepting the offering. Um, and the blood sprinkled on the people bound them to God. The blood um, thrown against the altar 
um, commits God to the relationship. And so look at this. God commits himself first before the people even commit themselves. Right. <laughs> God commits himself first. He says, there's a covenant between me and you. I'm going to commit myself first. Even though I'm telling you to do something and then I'm going to bless you. He said, but I'm going to commit myself to this covenant first. Ain't that just like God? My God. Ain't that just like God? Yeah. He's like, come on, come on, Sharon. Me, I'm gonna me and you gonna go into this covenant, but I'm gonna commit myself before you commit yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's good right there to me. The birth offering symbolized total commitment to God, and the peace offering symbolized um, living in grace and mercy. <clears throat> the blood represented the the pouring of life the outpouring of life, um, of one life being given for another, life for a life transaction. And we talked about that last week. As the nation received the blood of the covenant, the covenant was sealed. Now the covenant is now sealed. So both God and the Israelites were mutually bound by this covenant. But God committed himself first. That's a blessing. God, God made a covenant with them, but he said, I'm going to commit myself first. The last, the last statement. God will never, God will never forget his covenant. As Israel turns to God, he will turn to them and rescue them. Zechariah 9 11 says, as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. God said, because of what I committed to do, not because of what you committed, Trisha, okay. not because of what you committed, Dean Cole, but because of what I committed, I will never forget my covenant with you. And I'll always come through. <laughs> God said, I will always come through with my covenant. I will always come through because I can't lie. I will always come through. That's it. Comments, questions, what y'all got? I can't talk no more. My throat. <laughs> what y'all got? Mr. Barnes, what you got? Help me out. What is there but amen? I, I mean... It's, it's a powerful lesson. Just, uh, I'm, for once, I really ain't got much to say. Sorry. <laughs> Ditto. What you got, Tracy? I'm like, Tracy, all I got is God is faithful. And his love towards us will cause us to love him even more. The more we know him, the more we want to show him to love him and want to serve him and to do. And this was great lesson. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> Pastor, you got something else? Uh, <laughs> it's been said. It's done. That that's it. That that's it. That that was it. That that was it. It it gives you moments to pause. When I was studying this lesson, it gave me a lot of moments to pause. Like God. You committed yourself before I committed me. You did this. And then you said, I'll, I'll never, God, God, God will never go back on his word. That's right. That's right. That's what Paul got that, that statement while, while I was yet sinning. Mm. Because he had made a covenant promise. He couldn't go back on because even when I was yet, he died. Yeah. Because he had made a commitment. He had made a commitment. <laughs> Way back there. Okay. And he said, so it doesn't matter that you didn't keep your end of it. No, I'm going to didn't. keep my end of the party. No. Woo. Yeah. 
This lesson got to me. It took me a while to get through this one. <laughs> it took me a while. Because when you think about, when we think about the goodness of God. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. When we think about his goodness. Mm. And what he did for me. And for you, when we just think about his goodness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 